So here go. I'm John Kane, and I welcome you to Let's Talk Native on this Saturday, February 8th, 2020. While this program may not provide a path to spiritual enlightenment, we do encourage and in some cases start conversations. We kind of break the rules here for Native Radio. We don't do prayers and we don't do Buffalo speeches. We take a tough look at history, oppression, survival, and we talk about culture, the arts, politics, and identity. And we do step on a few toes along the way, or at least we may. Uh, but our real goal here is to bring people together by breaking down what separates us. We will uh, take on the false narratives and provide critical thinking to all that is heaped upon us. And we do it all right here live from the Cattaraugus Territory of the Seneca Nation. Uh, so let's talk native. But first, let me remind people that our audio streams live on our website, which is www.letstalknative.com. We stream live video of the show on our Facebook group page very, uh, via Facebook Live. We take the audio of the show, we put it up on SoundCloud after our broadcast, which puts it out as a, a podcast on your favorite podcast platforms, including now Spotify. We take the video and we put it up on YouTube, uh, and you can find it on our YouTube channel, which is Let's Talk Native TV. You can find video, videos of this show, my shows um, in New York, and uh, short-form videos that I do uh, that are oftentimes uh, more topical uh, and more specific to uh, to a, a specific specific subject. Uh, so, um, well, I, I guess we can get started. But uh, again, I want to remind people that I, that I am the producer of the show. Uh, I am normally joined by Jake Proud here in studio, but Jake's out with the flu. So, if um, yeah, if you see a little bit of fumbling going on <laughs> between the soundboard and perhaps what you see on the screen be, uh, behind me, um, that's all on me. Uh, it's not Jake's fault. He's sick. So, <laughs> so we'll just leave it at that. Um, look, I do, uh, I've got a very uh, specific issue that I want to talk about today. And I brought my, uh, my good friend, uh, James Gray into, uh, to, to join us so we can, uh, you know, so we can, James has been following a lot of this, um, the stuff going on in, um, uh, and what's uh, uh, for a much longer time than I have. And, and that can be evidenced by the number of flags <laughs> <laughs> that are both the the Uelas flags and uh, and the uh, and the warrior flags you will see at these uh, um, um, at at, at the, these these sites where where people are are, are kind of taking this on a little bit. Uh, so let me go ahead and introduce uh, James. Let me make sure I got your volume up where you need to be. James, I want to thank you or, or Sogayeta. I want to thank you for joining me on the program again, and uh, thank, thanks for bringing what you, uh, your your background on this subject uh, to the show. Um, it's gonna go with John. I'm glad to be on. I, uh, I'm glad you corrected my name instead of trying to use that colonial name. Well, unfortunately, I know that as you post on Facebook, <laughs> you've got like three Facebook pages. Some of them are you have Sogayeta on there, and some of them don't. So uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, make sure that I reach everybody. But but you're right, and of course, yeah, you um, I'm Gardillo, but uh, most people know me as John Kane. So I yeah. try to accommodate yeah. what is common knowledge, even if it's uh, um, wrong common knowledge, I guess. Yeah, well, it's not our fault, you know. Facebook does what they do, you know. So a lot of times they'll uh, delete some posts and tell you that you're in Facebook jail now. And so you have to make a little stretch uh, before you get back on. Yeah, that's why you got to have multiple pages, I guess, to, to make sure that we're, we're getting through <laughs> this. All right. So you um, you sent me some uh, – you give me some pretty good early indications of what's what's going on, um, uh, especially in, uh, in some of these remote territories. And you've been following this one pretty closely for a while. So – you sent me uh, some of the heads up um, and some links to some of the uh, the live feeds that were going on about the imminent um, raid that was going on, um, as well as some of the videos that led up to it. The, you know, the folks that went out to um, um, to Montreal to the RCMP headquarters and, and put on a pretty good display. <clears throat> but uh, on Thursday is when uh, the RCMP went in there, got really really physical with a bunch of people, including and or mainly women. Um, and uh, and and then there was a backlash because territories all over and, and and I want to talk specifically about this as well um, responded and and not just responded because I want to make the distinction between protesting and and taking an action and what I saw demonstrated in various places um, not so much on the U.S. side but prim primarily on the on the other side of the imaginary line were 
rail, railways that were shut down, bridges that were blocked, highways that were blocked. And so these these aren't just protests. These aren't you know just carrying signs and you know and or sitting behind a computer on Facebook. These are people going out in in the world in the weather and doing what Canada is most afraid of. And frankly, so is the United States, messing with their infrastructure. So I, I guess back me up to um, to what led up to to the um, to the raids. I guess um, if you if you like and and add any color commentary you want to on what's been going on up there at. Uh, um, at, at, the, at these at these camps and at these sites. Yeah. Okay. Well, in uh, Wet'suwet'en territory, that's been going on for ten years. The people moved back onto their territory um, to block the gas pipeline that's going trying to go through there, and the courts of uh, BC have uh, given the RCMP the authorization to go in and move in and. Uh, clean the people out, I guess, you know, and um, so on Thursday, they they went in and they they occupied the front of the camp and then then, then they went in early in the morning. The you, next mean, you, morning mean the RC, you mean the RCMP did? The RCMP, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, they went into the first part of the camp. See, there was three, three kind of camps. There was two camps in front of the main camp at 27. Where, where the main people are, and uh, there was two camps up above them, different sections of the road. So they came in and um, in force, and uh, they removed the people from the first one. They arrested, uh, let me think, I think it was 16 people from, from the first camp. And then the next day, they moved in early again in the morning, and uh, as I believe, they, they arrested three people. Well, I guess so, I guess um, we should back up a little farther. I mean, to be clear, this is a Trans Canada pipeline that they're trying to run through this uh, Wet'suwet'en territory in in BC, and and I hate to even use the word BC. The idea of, of calling something British Columbia of all names, but but anyway, so they they're going to run this pipeline, and again, looking at native territories as if these are sacrifice zones that they can just run this stuff through our territories because. Of population densities, or what they what they regard as little resistance, or, or whatever, and so the the original plan is when some of these folks who've been at this for quite some time now, over, like you said, over ten years, started saying, "No, not only are we going to resist this, but we're going to we know how beautiful this land is, so we're going we're going to go back to living in uh, doing doing our trap lines and doing some of these other things, living li living more in communion with." The beautiful territory that they have and so they started building some some cabins and uh and when trans canada and or the the pipeline representatives first showed up they said uh, no we're we're not allowing you to do this and 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 that movie they, they, they got a 20 minute movie film out called invasion which kind of goes back in time a little bit so this this is like i've been going on for quite some time so what brings us up to last week is again multinational corporation uh fossil fuel corporation getting the blessings of uh of justin trudeau and and the court system canadian court systems to uh to go ahead and push their way through yeah and um a lot of the things with the this uh pipeline that's going through there and the uh, pipeline they want to put through uh through um blue river where the uh people are camp camped in a camping place there and they're blocking that one um but they want to ship this to the asian countries that they're not in use of uh canada for these things well yeah i think and that's an important point i think to, to uh, distinction to make is that anybody who looks at any of this increase in um fracking um tar sands oil uh, some of this um this oil that's been coming out of um, uh, out of the Dakotas, uh, that that it's all about energy independence. No, it's it's purely about making money and selling yeah. the stuff off, especially to China and to and, and to other countries. And and I think it's important that people know that because you know when anytime somebody says, "Well, this is how we become uh, you know energy uh, independent," th that's a load of crap. This is about white men making as much money off of this land through the extraction and through. Again, through these pipelines, and the pipelines are a big, big issue because that's how they get the stuff to market. They they right. whisk it across, and they also use these pipelines to further exacerbate the land when it comes to using the natural gas to extract. 
tar sands oil and do and 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 and, and so much of this other stuff. I mean, it's you know I don't think people have a can fully wrap their heads around. And and I'll tell you this: as, when I talked about this on my show in New York. I know in New York City, the folks down there are saying, oh, but aren't the people in Canada really nice? And, and I'm saying, no, they're not nice. They're racist as hell. <laughs> and, uh, and this is what we deal with. And, and I don't care how much you know, Justin Trudeau smiles for a camera. The guy is screwing our people and, uh, and doing it with a smile on his face. Yeah, and he's screwing the Canadian people because you hear the Canadian people talking about this energy and this oil and how it's going to – benefit them with jobs and yes it does provide a lot of jobs in the beginning but it goes down to barely nothing for them to be working and the money doesn't go to the people it goes to the rich corporations which you're talking about well and, so and, what the, and, the, and the the so-called taxpayer ends up picking up the burden of any kind of remediation that has to be done after this mess is left in the in the wake of all this this extraction or when when there's a crisis when there's a, a break in a pipeline an oil line or a gas line you know or any of the devastating things that, that that happen when these things go badly it's the it's the the, the taxpayer in US and Canada that, that's going to pick up the bill and it's the native people who are left with damaged lands yeah yeah and it's it's a shame because right now the the 27 camp, the main camp there is uh, surrounded by RCMP who are in full riot gear and uh, weapons. Uh, and Mili dogs. Military, absolute military assault style. You know, these are like SWAT teams that, uh, yep. you know, and, and the crazy part is <laughs> this is happening while Justin Trudeau is trying to earn a seat at the UN Security Council table. I mean, he is literally trying to move himself into that position. And. And, and Canada stands in stark violation of the U.N. Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. There's no free prior and informed consent. There's no consent whatsoever. And when people say, well, we consulted. Well, consulting with somebody is not the same thing as getting con uh, consent. And there's also this idea of them propping up the puppet governments, the band councils and, uh, and some of these other uh, organizations claiming – you know, trying to assert that they have the authority to, to destroy the land for, uh, for you know, right out from underneath future generations. Yeah, it's a shame because, you know, you have people like AFN who uh, speaks for all the, the band chiefs and, you know, they're the ones that were mainly against it. Although they're now, they're, they're speaking about that they have to uh, listen to the hereditary chiefs out there and, and speak with them, you know, but I don't know how far, how far that will go because they have a different object, uh, object than uh, the people themselves. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that's, you know, I oftentimes will get people will ask me, well, well, when you talk about, you know, Wet'suwet'en people or, or when you say Wet'suwet'en, who are you talking about? I'm, I'm talking about the people. I'm not talking yeah. about, you know, elected chiefs, band council chiefs, you know, um, you know, tribal chairmen or, you know, frankly, a lot of these guys who claim to be traditional or hereditary chiefs they're also you know in the bag on a lot on a lot of this stuff too and i'm not you know making you know i'm not saying that's the situation here but it it, it does it does get disconcerting because we know that you know from our own experience back back here uh how often th these guys who claim to be traditional leaders are anything but right and you know in in the way it's supposed to be with our people our people are only spokespeople for their clans and um, it's the clans who, who have, uh, have the voice, but our people have lost that idea that they are the power of our, of our country, of our, of our people. And they're the ones who make the decisions, not any one person who's put in place. All they're, all they're allowed to do is speak to what the people want. Well, and we, pe we had an expression that when translated meant, you're a servant. You're, you're, you're put as a servant of the people. Now, in the U.S. and Canada, they call public service, you know, just a politician. And so the whole meaning of being a servant of the people kind of it loses its meaning because these guys are pulling in, you know, all kinds of you know dollars, not only uh, as salaries, but they're getting paid by lobbyists and, and everything else. I mean, when you look at on the U.S. side, how much a senator makes versus how much their wealth increases over the life of their, uh, you know, th their tenure as you know, in, in Congress or on, in the Senate. It's it's really it, it's just an indication of how much pay to play there is that, that's going on. But uh, no, I mean, w w whether frankly, whether you're elected 
or whether you are supposed to be a part of uh, you know a more culture based or traditional council, you you are only a servant of your people. There's right. there's almost nothing, and even in any of these you know band councils and tribal councils or you know constitutional uh, you know forms of, of government, they don't give grant that kind of authority. There's there's no place in any of the, uh, any of those documents that give that kind of authority. But but again. When when you see international documents saying, "Well, you need to get consent from the people," the question that the, all they want to do is say, "Well, then just give us give us somebody who will give us consent." We don't care about the yeah. people. We just want we want somebody to sign off on this. Yep, and you know one of the big things is like um, the RCMP um, putting a, a court order from the BC government to to go in there to uh, rectify the situation so the uh ga coastal gas pipeline can put their pipes through and you look at the situation that happens all over the territory when uh, our own people are being ex executed on on lands and they let those people go you know and and our people who are standing up not not without weapons in Wasuddin and they're they're the ones who are being arrested and and flopped around there was even a a news news uh, journalist who was flopped around and arrested and the RCMP told um, the, the news company that oh uh, we didn't detain him in any way and that's simply wrong because they did detain him and there was there was film of that on them so you know they're, they're making choices that uh, a government that's willing to continue to steal the lands that they never owned and never do own and they're making those judgments on our people. Right, right. Well, uh, again, fill me in a little bit on um, on what uh, what happened w with these with these raids. I'm gonna I've got a little bit of a slideshow. I'm gonna run through some of the pictures that we've got. They're a little dark, but I'm hoping that folks who are watching on Facebook Live can see some of these. But but talk about you know how they came in, when they came in, and all of that. Okay, yeah, I, I believe it was on a Thursday that they first came in to, uh, to, to enforce that injunction that was put on. And, and the first moment, all they did is they um, lined up their vehicles and, and, and police and uh, started to uh, detain people from going through and detain the hereditary chiefs that they call them. Uh, from going through and talking, and they refused to meet meet with um, with them about the situation to uh, de-escalate what was going to what was going to happen. And and our people also uh, always know that the situation always turns bad on the part of uh, RCMP or any other kind of police who simply say they're enforcing these injunctions. Um, so they they came in and they surrounded that and the next morning and they made a move onto the first uh encampment that was there and they told them uh they have to leave they didn't want to leave uh they said they were not leaving and then they uh they started to arrest them and that's where they arrested the 16 people that were there and they moved on from there to the next encampment and basically did the same thing and said that they were going to be holding off now and, and to enforce the 17, the main uh, encampment there. And what they did is they they now have surrounded it. They gave them uh, an opportunity to, to leave. They said, you can leave. And then uh, word, word came out, which I've heard, and I'm not really saying it's factual, that the people there we're going to leave uh, but a lot of them before it said they won't leave so they would be facing the arrest so as it was uh they they flew in people they flew in helicopters rcmp uh all geared up uh in their regular black uniforms and also in military style uniforms and they surrounded uh, the encampment as of right now there are people there on the outside of the police and talking to people inside and and trying to get a better situation and and there are people posting of what's going on so 
Uh, that's where I'm following all this. Yeah, and, and and I and I appreciate. Uh, there's a bunch of people who have been posting videos, live videos, uh, recorded videos on my Facebook group page, which is Let's Talk Native. Um, and I appreciate all of you who are doing it. And uh, uh, you know whether you're responsible for the video or whether you just you've come across it. You know, the more people who are aware of this stuff, the better. You know, one of the things that that I have to point out too is there's there's so much danger here because you know they may send in um a, a, a couple of policemen you know one time that will show you know some level of diplomacy and you know or maybe even compassion and then the next time you don't know what to expect out of the next next batch of cops they send in because some will be very very aggressive abusive and others will will at least you know try to you know try to have a conversation i'm not I'm not trying to call these guys the good apples versus bad apples. As far as I'm concerned, they've all got each other's back when they're doing this stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm with the FTP movement when it comes to that, which is F the police. Um, yeah. Uh, and, 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 and including and especially the RCMP that we've always had just a really, really bad history with. Yeah. And, you know, and they act so idiotic where nobody knows what's going on. People talk to them, say, well, what's happening? The hereditary chiefs were talking to them. They were supposed to have a meeting with the, the people who were uh, in between talking with the RCMP. We're, we're police officers also. And uh, they start. They were supposed to have a meeting today at 10 a.m. And they never showed up till 11 a.m. And then when they came in and talked to them, uh, they basically ignored them and went down to where the RCMP were at the main camp. So, so they're not only thieves but they're they're people who lie constantly lie and um, i don't know if it's the canadian people as well as the american just live, listen to somebody who constantly lies you well know, and, and, and you know and look we got to be clear here even with the commission they put together on missing and murdered indigenous women they were it was clear that there have been many um agencies police agencies including the rcmp that not only have they um, been derelict on the missing and murdered indigenous women, which is also connected to these man camps and these pipelines and these extractive industries, but the, some of the police were actually involved in, in some in perpetrating the crimes against these women. And so, you know, our relationship and our suspicion and our cynicism or skepticism towards these guys has to do with the abuse that they they themselves have uh, been responsible for when it comes to you know some of our most vulnerable pe vulnerable people, especially especially our women. Yeah, and that's that's happening not only in Canada but also in the United States. Oh, sure. Traffic, yeah. Trafficking that's happening, you know, and, and there is involvement from police police people, not the entire agencies, but there are people involved who are are right into that. You know, yep, and yep. It, it's it's very hard to deal with that. So yeah, you know, these guys are making money off it. This this is what they do. They get paid off for this stuff. And I want to be clear yep. for those of you who don't know what a man camp is. A man camp are these you know, are these literally these large residential units that are often like um, trailers. They're like mobile homes that they bring into an area where there's going to be mining or extraction or or a major build like a like a, like a, a pipeline build, and they'll house men who leave their families behind they they go out to make the big bucks working on these pipelines working on these uh you know on in these oil fields and gas fields and regardless whether they got a wife and children you know back home they they find themselves in the wilderness and it's like all of the rules you know of behavior just just fly out the window and this is where we have so many women that uh, that are pulled that when we talk about sex trafficking, we aren't talking about sending people to the Philippines here. We're talking about sex trafficking them right to right, right to these man camps. And these guys are making sometimes 30, 40, 50 dollars an hour or more. I mean, they're making pretty big dollars. They're or their their contracts where they're putting in many hours during the week. So, you know, they're getting paid time, time and a half. So these guys are making a lot of money and they got nothing to spend it on. So they the idea of spending it on um, uh, on you know guys bringing women in there is is what is what they do and and I and I just think I, I I hate to almost have to explain this but I think it's important that people understand. Yeah, I don't think people understand that and, you know and when they when the people especially uh, uh, kind of whose freedom in Blue River you know she's she's one of the main ones that is fighting the the man camps that they're trying to develop, you know, and, and everybody knows that what happens with these man camps, like you said, you know, they got so much money and uh, 
They got nobody out there, no uh, women folk out there. So, you know, they take advantage of that. And, and the easiest people to take advantage is our, our Native women. Well, and, and so, again, there's no law enforcement that, that's, that's willing to step up. I mean, oftentimes, and, and this was kind of even evident in, in, uh, in, in some of these videos that I've seen, uh, the, the film Invasion. Uh, you know, the, the one woman says, look, you guys show up with the contractors to pave their way. But when we call you about our, you know, our trap lines or land being damaged or anything else, you guys take, you know, three, four five hours to show up. So I mean, yeah. and 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 that's not even talking about whether somebody's you know uh, you know person you know personally been injured you know whether it's women being assaulted or whatever else. But that's the that's the situation. They blame it on the remoteness of our of our people, but you know they they're literally you know using their industry to bring this this abuse into our territories. Yeah, and it's all about money. You look at uh, a couple of the videos that showed is that. You know, they wouldn't allow any people who live in that area to go in and find out how their families were doing. In yeah, there. And, and I guess but, that's got to be covered a little bit. One of the things, the protests that took place in, uh, in Montreal at the RCM headquarters, part of that was over the idea that the RCMP had set up checkpoints where it was literally prohibiting Native people from going on their own land. Right. I mean, this wasn't even about necessarily going to these to these sites where where quote unquote protests were happening. They were literally stopping. Look, they would look at a car, and if it were native people in it, they would be turned. They would be denied entry onto native lands. If you were white, I mean, this is how crazy it is that they set up checkpoints that were specifically intended to stop native people from going onto native land. I mean, it's yeah. absurd. Yeah, and and if you were white in a company. You look at all the, the logging trucks they were letting through. They weren't letting the people that owned the land through, but they were letting the logging trucks through and letting them out with logs. You know, so it's the whole thing is all about money for them, for yeah. all these rich corporations. Yeah, I mean, it's it really is. Uh, you know, and, and, and again, for, for anybody who thinks you know, that, that this stuff is only happening in places like Brazil or in, in Bolivia or in Africa or in, in Australia, and, and those, those people out in the world, and I'm talking about the, mostly the non-Native people because we all know just what, uh, how much racism exists on the, in U.S. And, and Canada as it relates to Native people living in these rural areas in particular. But, but Canada... Uh, is you know they they have marketed themselves as this kinder gentler uh you know nation you know who's concerned about environment and nothing could be farther from the truth i mean what what they're doing what they're destroying with tar sands with these you know uh w with these um uh, you know, the, the, these these trains, you know, these the bomb trains, as they're calling, uh, as they're being called, what they're um, the, these pipelines, and and with with all of this, you know, large build out of of marketing to Asia, primarily to China, uh, of fossil fuels. I mean, it's the part is that it's crazy. If if, if you're a Canadian, first on on its face, you should be concerned that that. If you even if you enjoy the, this kind of fossil fuel energy, it's being it's 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 being exploited and it's not going to be there for your future. It's being sold off now, for, so the people who have access to the land illegally can make as much money in as short a period of time as possible. Yeah, and and the thing is with this uh, being Canadian, that's one of the things that our people have to understand, and it comes back to what you talk about on some of your shows. The voting process, you know, where they want our people to vote these people in. Uh, and these people ha have nothing to do with us, you know. In some areas, yeah, there are some Native native people who out outweigh the white people. But in totality, it's, it, our Native people don't have anything to do with it. Yeah, even, even, if, even if a Native person gets elected into a position on the U.S. or Canadian side in, in one of these areas – it's it's usually if they can get elected, they either got voted in by white people who they're accountable to, or they're in a, in a place where, where as, as a native community, they are so marginalized by the white communities around them that it, that it's irrelevant. I mean, I, I don't know how to impress upon people how um, wrong it is to think that you can fix 
a Canadian or a U.S. political system from within by uh, by supposedly letting your best and brightest leave your um, uh, leave any kind of representation to Native people and pick it up as uh, representing U.S. and Canadians. I, I just don't I don't understand the logic in that. And yet they'll look at you, look at, at you like you have three eyes when you say, no, I'm not going to vote in their elections. I'm not going to participate in their census. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. Yeah. I mean, you look at uh, even the, the politics of it, like uh, in Canada, for instance, um, um, Trudeau, Justin Trudeau put in uh, Judy wilson Rabel in, in office as, as like their district attorney. And then the situation came up where this company of uh, Lavalin um, misused their position, and they were being they're being challenged by the court. And uh, the gov the um, Justin Trudeau wanted uh, her to forget about what was going on. You know, yeah, and, I mean, the, the, uh, again, the the amount of contradiction and hypocrisy and corruption that that exists with any of these. Look, they don't even you don't get into those kinds of positions if you haven't sold people out at some point along the way, because you know, it's the power brokers that that will allow anybody to to be elevated into these into these positions, and and you've got to have given somebody up to get there. Hey, Jen, we're, yeah. we're, we're at the we're at the bottom of the hour, so I'm going to take a break, um, catch your breath a little bit, and come right back. Stay on the line because I'd like to uh, I want to continue with this a little bit more, but uh, yeah, hang with yeah, me. And, I'd also like to talk about the people, all the other people and nations throughout Canada. Who yeah, are, and that's an important thing because I, I think it's important that people realize that you don't have to show up in Standing Rock. You don't have to show up in uh, what's so in territory. You can do things closer to home. And, and so I want, that's why I spend the, the second half of the show talking about. So we'll do that when we come back. All right. This is, a, this is John Kane with uh, Sogoyeta. This is Garjillo with Sogoyeta on uh, Let's Talk Native. <laughs> we'll, be, uh, we'll, we'll be right back after this. Thanks for coming back. This is John Kane. I've got uh, Sogoyeta uh, on the line here with me. Uh, look, I want to thank our sponsors. We, can't, we couldn't do a show like this if we didn't have some people. And, and what we've got is primarily Native uh, – uh, well, we have only Native uh, sponsors of the show. I want to uh, thank uh, Ross and Holly John and the RJE family of businesses here in Cattaraugus. Also here in Cattaraugus, I want to thank uh, Eric White in ERW Enterprises. And, of course, uh, Six Nations, I want to thank – the folks at Grand River Enterprises. Um, look, you know, we we do as much as we can with with the resources that we have here. Um, and I also, you know, I make a trip to New York each week to do to do a show down there to try to enlighten people, explain to people who we are and what we do. And um, you know, it's there's there's never we never run out of things to talk about because there's always something to talk about. But I think it's important that people realize um, that it's not. It's not always easy to get accurate uh, information out, and that's why for us to you know provide a you know a, a group page and and to provide this show as a, as a means to have that conversation, and you know people can can question the veracity of the things that we talk about. Um, and look, we bring it up. It's up to you to do the research. It's up to you to go online and not just on Facebook, but but wherever you get your information, and. Look, you can look at the state response, the, the the Canadian response, but measure that against against reality and, and against common sense, and and understand what what people are facing, and 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 don't forget for a second the history that um, that is behind all this. You know, we're talking about people who have lived been living on lands for for all intents and purposes forever since as they say since time immemorial, uh, long before white people started realizing that. Even in what they called undeveloped lands, there there was money sitting under the ground in terms of uh, oil and uh, minerals, including diamonds and gold and all kinds of other things. But but even once they find the stuff, they've got to trample over our, our lands with, with highways and with pipelines and with, with 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 rail lines and everything else, so they can you know all the stuff they're ripping out of the ground they can bring it to market. And I think it's important that people realize that. So that's what we try to do here with Let's Talk Native and with my show in New York as well. And and that's what I try to do with the um, with the short form videos that I do. So 
you know, I, I guess I just want to make make clear so people eh, perhaps understand a little bit more what you know what's at stake here and what we're trying to do here. So uh, I'll I'll go there. All right, uh, James, why don't you? Or so good at them, <laughs> James. Why don't you go <laughs> ahead and fill me in a little bit on on where uh, what's been happening in some of the other territories, including including uh, you know Gonyogeha territory. Uh, uh, um, what's what's been happening in terms of the actions that people have been taking? Well, you know, it's happening all over uh, what they so-called Canada, you know, Saskatchewan and Winnipeg. I have many friends in Winnipeg uh, with the War Society there, and they're doing a lot to uh, to help fight this thing that's happening uh, in B.C. And uh, it's happening all over. Everybody is doing something. You see, you've seen a lot of the posts where they're blocking... Uh, Railroads or their uh, highways. Blocking highways. They're they're doing rolling blockades, you know, and uh, so everybody seems to be doing something. And I think that's what kind of uh, changes a lot of the the, the so-called political interests. That hey, we we better start uh, waking up because these people are all waking up. Yeah, we're, we're not finding- we're not just carrying flags out in front of Parliament here. And I think you know one of the things that uh, that impresses me, and and, and frankly. The, the same thing happened back during the Oka conflict. Native people were, were look. There, there were power lines that were being, cho- you know, uh, chainsaws taking power lines down. There was all kinds of things that were happening. It wasn't well publicized. We live in a world now where it's easier to, you know, to to make sure that people know these actions are taking place. But I guess the point is, you know, I look. Ten thousand people at one point showed up at Standing Rock. Not yep. ten thousand people showing up to to tow the line and and to stop anybody from building something, but they all showed up there. And some of these people, and and I and I think there's a lot of just criticism that comes to those guys who become Facebook famous, and uh, and the next thing you know, they're out doing you know writing books and and doing speaking tours and and getting paid for all these speaking engagements because they got famous out of a conflict when all they did was show up there for the cameras. And, right. and I'm not saying that's what everybody does or that's the only thing that people do. But when I look at situations where we've had meaningful um, uh, you know, actions, they weren't always at the site of the, of the main conflict. They happen everywhere else because that spreads them thin. And it, does the, and, it, and it does the one thing that both the U.S. and Canada are most concerned about, which is demonstrates how vulnerable their infrastructure is, especially when they think that they can take advantage of running some of that infrastructure through our territories. Yeah, and you and you got to look at the situation that's happening in what people call Canada. Uh, the same situation is happening in the so-called United States, where they're uh, they're infringing on the Lakota people, they're infringing on the people in Minnesota, you know. And uh, these things are happening. It's not in the situation that it is now, but it could be in that situation. And and things happening all over the country, even in uh, Ganyangahaga territory, all the territories are are doing something in support of West uh whether it be the rolling blockades or uh, a protest that happened here in Akwizasne. You know, the people went out and they they stopped uh, the outside traffic and allowed local traffic to come through and, and stop the commerce of Canada by sending these trucks back back across, you know. But the main thing that happens, um, the, the customs of the U.S. and Canada closed down the port and wouldn't let anybody go through. And in our territory, so they you know, us. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they did and no, they didn't. No, what they what did is, mean. what they did is they split up our people. Yep. You know, our people have to go back home. They have to, they're working over here or they're working over there and they come back home. So no, they wouldn't even. They, they do do a calculation on when they do something like that, who can they injure the most? And, yep. you know, will they injure native people who, who rely on these, these so called border crossings? Or will they interfere with their own commerce? And, you know, they don't mind screwing some of their own people in the process. You, but, yep. you know, because the whole thing is they can, their view is they can not only can injure us, but they also turn more of the white people against us. Yeah, right. right. You know, so the people here, the, and it was people here that came about and uh, did this action. And um, they did, to me, they did really great. You know, it was just that the, the customs and uh, 
the tribal people and the band people, you know, said, hey, you know, they can't do that. And then they come about and say, oh, we're looking for the safety of the people, you know, and, and there weren't, they're not looking for the safety of the people. They just want to interfere with whatever they're doing here. Well, and, and the thing is, if they want to do something, then let them do something. I mean, if yeah. they, they want to protect, you know, people from being in harm's way, then let them put themselves in harm's way. Let them take something on. But most of the time, they're just doing, they're like the liaisons to the, you know, to the outside. They're, they're advocating more for, you know, for these, you know, these energy companies and for the, the local governments and the, and the national government, the provincial governments. So, you know, and, and I get it. I mean, I even, I know that even out in uh, uh, Wet'suwet'en territory, you know, uh, some of the, the traditional chiefs, you know, had suggested, well, maybe some of the, you know, some of you folks should leave the camps. And I, and I get it. But they didn't come, from what I understood, they didn't come across heavy handed and say, no, you must leave. They said, right. we, we hate to see you guys get hurt and uh, we would like to make the recommendation that you leave. And then the people said, thanks, but we'll stay. And yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. 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 You know, so, I mean, the, the things that have been going on here in uh, in Akwizasne, in uh, Ganawage, in Ganasadage, Tindanega. and Tindanega, yep. and Oshwagon, you know, everybody's in support of what's going out there, you know, and they're doing what they can at this point to help out. And uh, if the, the police continue this raiding, then other things will be looked at and thought of because uh, as Ungwehunga people, we stand together wherever we are. You know, Turtle Island belongs to all of us. The lands out there in uh, British Columbia belong to the Iroquois people. We're, we're all stakeholders, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And our lands here belong to them, you know. And we got to get away from all these uh, fences that were put up, you know, to, to say this is our land. This is, you know, our our property we have when it belonged to all of us. Well, what happens is we end up thinking like white people. I mean, even their, the, you know, the, the European concept of nationhood and boundaries and all that, none of that stuff w was ours. I mean, and, you know, I go through this a lot of times on my show where I talk about how we start using language and, uh, and expressions and concepts and, and applying them in, in very forceful ways that, that aren't ours in the first place. And, and look, and I'm not trying to tell, you know, call everybody out for assimilation or, or being whitewashed or calling them apples, but I'm just saying try to be more aware of it because you, we can all find ourselves slipping into, into a conversation about nationhood. I mean, look, we, we get hung up on the, the five nations, six nations or, or whatever else. And, and, and that that concept's not even ours. I mean, right. the the idea that you know whether you're whether you if you're Gunyogehaga, it doesn't mean that that you're a Mohawk Nation citizen. It means right. that that's the that's where your people come from. Yeah. And, and so we we lose the the sense that no, we have we have words in our language that give us a give people a description so people kind of know where we come from. But that's not to, to say that that's that's you know some European idea of nationhood, right? So. And it's like the Galunaga always say. The Galunaga always says that uh, we are Ungwe Hunwe. We you know our names are given to us for the lands we live on, you know. And uh, but as one, we are all Ungwe Hunwe. And if you look at it, all our people got to understand that they have their own thing. You know, we call we say Ungwe Hunwe, which means either the original people or the original human beings and every nation, you know, Lakotas, the Dene, the Anishinaabe, they all have the same word that they use. Ganaka Maoli in, in, uh, right. in Hawaii. Yeah, that's the same yeah. thing. Yep, absolutely. Yep. And there's, there, you know, they're like us. We have our way. We have our, our teachings that was given us, and that's what we carry out. So everybody, every Native person has to understand they're not an American. They're not a Canadian. They're not a Quebecois, they're not an Ontario or BC or New York State or uh, California or Arizona. Well, and even, have... even even some of the, the the names that they've they've bestowed on people like Seneca or Mohawk or Lac de Flambeau or or whatever. I mean, you know, even even words like Métis. I mean, they, these are these are words that that aren't ours. They and they don't accurately describe anything, and so. We we can sometimes get hung up on on taking too much pride in in these labels that that don't really properly apply. 
Yeah, and you know, and we take the pride in the labels that they put on us for our territories. You mm-hmm. know, they try to say that this is your little reserve. You know, this is your area. When when outside the area belongs to us also. You know, so our people got to understand that. You know, they talk about land claims. They talk about here in Akwesasne. They talk about the Dundee situation, or they talk about the Nutfield tract that belongs to us. Well, it's not just the Nutfield tract that belongs to us. You know, it's a major part of uh, Ontario that belongs to well, us. Well, and, and even and even that whole idea of belonging and and owning, it's really that. We have access, you know, that the, the, right. the, land, the land isn't ours as a possession. It's ours to use. And, and, the, right. and to the extent that we've allowed other people to 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 live amongst us and, and, and then ultimately inundate our, our lands, uh, you know, to, to suggest that somehow we've given those lands up is is ridiculous. Now, the, the other thing that I, I think is, it, it, you know, comes into play and I hear this all the time. Where people and look, even the folks in in Hawaii are dealing with this. When people say, you know, we need to make the best deal we can. We, get, we you know, if they're offering us money, <laughs> we should take whatever they're offering because it's the it's the best we're ever going to see. And <laughs> without even without even considering for a moment what they're what they're saying about their their children and their children's children. Yeah, you know that that makes me laugh every time they say that that you know we need to take the best deal we can. You know, and then along with that best deal, there's uh, things that are put on by these governments and states that you have to do. Like, uh, again, I bring back like the Nutfield track here. I mean, the um, Dundee land claim, you know, they wanted to give a set amount of money to the people, but yet half of that money was being going to be spent back to the fun- funding that the government gave them to work on this plan. And then then and, I told then I told people how much the Senecas were giving out of gaming revenue to New York State on a yearly basis, and they said, "Wait a second, that's more that's more than we're getting offered. To, <laughs> we're getting paid here. I mean, the, the Senecas gave New York State like a billion and a half dollars over you know over fourteen or fifteen years, and 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 these people are saying, and we're willing to take twenty six million or fifty two million. That's ridiculous. And so, but you know you you but because people can't put money into context, especially, and there is no context or proper context when you're going to say you're going to give X amount of dollars for today for land for forever. I mean, it just doesn't, you, you can't even compute that. Right. Right. I mean, you look at, like you said before, you know, the, the animals, the medicines, the water, you know, you can drink out of the, some of the rivers in BC like you can't drink anywhere else because they're so pure, you know, and and uh, the animals are pure there, and and they're all part of our system, you know. That's why when we we talk and we say ahanda ahanda we give thanks to all these things, you know, and and we're not praying to them, but no, we're, thanking we're actually them. talking about a relationship, and and we're and we're confirming and acknowledging. That we have a relationship with all of this stuff, and that that relationship is important. And it's it, and the reason we bring it up is is to acknowledge, to to be thankful, and to uh, and again to to continue to um, foster that relationship. Yeah. So you know, all these things are so important, and, and that's the things that we're we're uh, supporting the Wastudan people out here in our, in our territories. You know. And it's not going to end, you know. It's going to continue. Whether they, uh, in in my mind, they're going to move in on the people. They're going to make their arrests. They're going to, you know, do what they're doing because, of, like Trudeau said, oh, that's not my problem. That was the BC government who put it out yeah. in a court order, you know. So he's trying to extract himself from that after getting voted in a second time by a lot of our people that voted him in. Well, and, and that's uh, again, it gets frustrating because every time I I hear people say like like somehow we have a responsibility to to help remove Trump from the American politics, you white people put him in there, you take him out for crying out loud, you know? <laughs> right? You know, and, right. And they look and they say, well, it's people like you who are the reason he's in there. No, 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 yeah. no. I mean, and the fact that you know the, the people can say, well, if not Trudeau, it would have been you know that Shearer guy or whatever else, but. You know what? Then that's on you too. These these are the best you know Canadians that that, that country can put up, and right. but don't don't try to put that on us. We we've got nothing yeah. to do with that. 
and our people that are running for these offices of uh, senators and congressmen ministers and, and yeah, ministers stuff, of yeah. parliament, yeah. you know, what are they going to accomplish in, 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 in those situations? They're not going to accomplish anything. When they have that get and go that they, they say they have, why aren't they working for our people? Well, and, and, and again, on the, US, on the U.S. side, there's so much political favoritism that goes on to whether somebody can serve on a committee and, and where they can have a voice there. And and if you don't play ball with the, with the party establishment, you're going to be on the outside looking. Look at look at Mitt Romney. This is a guy yeah. who's probably got you know you know uh, because he voted against uh, Trump in the impeachment hearings. You know the the rest of the Republicans want to disown him. I mean, so you 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 can't be a person of conscience in any of these. And I'm not praising Mitt Romney by any means. I mean, but but this it just gives you an example of how closed minded, uh, you know, the, the so-called, uh, you know, what people want to call democracy. The, uh, and, and it's anything but it's it's tyranny. Right. Right. And everybody got to, has to understand that both Canada and the United States are colonies of Great Britain. They're the ones who make the control. They're the ones that say, well, yeah, you can attack this person. You can uh, put sanctions on this poor person. We agree with it. And they collect their uh, taxes from both Canada and the United States. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know this goes back so deep in terms of not just, um, you know, the the racism that, that gets associated with, with having European history and uh, and. and and ongoing, you know, connections with these, with their motherlands or whatever else. But, you know, but at the end of the day, even that's not real where the loyalty runs. The loyalty runs with, with just making money. I mean, the, yeah. this is about exploiting people and land. And it always has been from, you know, from the genocide that our people, you know, began to experience over 500 years ago to, to the slave trade, all of it. It was, it's always been about white people making money. And and yep. that's still that's still what's at, at stake here. Yeah, and then and the other thing too is our people need to understand that they should be in full support of what's going on. They shouldn't they shouldn't be saying, Well, you can't do that here, you shouldn't do that here, you should go to Ottawa or you should go to the RCMP. Do it everywhere. Do it everywhere you can. Look, yeah. when you're talking about Trans Canada or the RCMP, Trans Canada is every place. So you, you can you can do something, you know, to make a make a point against Trans Canada any place. And and the RCMP, that's you know, that's that's Canadian federal. You can you can fight off the RCMP any place. And and same on the US side. When you look at some of the infrastructure issues and that kind of stuff. Anybody who thinks that that we all have to jump, you know, do this huge caravan and then put even more of a burden on a on a on a struggling community by showing up there and expecting to be fed and and, and clothed and everything else. No, you want to do an action, do an action closer to home because you have we all have the same enemies. We don't have to travel, you know, 3000 miles to, you know, to do it. Right. Yeah. You know, so well, I, I, James, I want to thank you for joining me again. Um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get you back on and we'll, we'll stay uh, in touch with what's going on here. Um, I appreciate a lot of the posts that you're putting up on, on Facebook. And, and look, I also want to say, I, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing people for being Facebook warriors. <laughs> look, at least that's something. Because that's right. something that any of us can do. We can all share information. Not all of us are as mobile as others, and you know some of us have responsibilities that we, you know, we we can't escape. So we we try to share information any way that we can. You know, I've I've got some you know radio equipment, and so I can do it one way, and and I can use social media. But you know, do it any way that you can. But but you know, my biggest concern is when people say, "Well, I can't go all the way out to uh, you know." Uh, Whatsoever in ter territory or to or Standing Rock or to you know or wherever the next event is, you don't have to. You you don't have to go there and and you know and and then camp out in you know in harsh weather or and then be a burden to to people who are already struggling. No, you can do this stuff anyway. And you know you can do this stuff close to home and then go home and, and have a hot meal every night. You don't have to go you know travel three thousand miles to do it. Yeah, and you just have to make people aware. You know, other people have to be aware because a lot of times uh, the media itself does not cover everything that's going on, you know. Well, and when you get so, a chance to, to make a public statement, I mean, when when you see, uh, you know, media is inaccurately reporting something, call them out. Call them down. Do what you got to do. Don't, don't let them get away with it. I will say the other thing people can do is there's always the, um, the opportunity to, to make donations. And there's any number of uh, uh, of 
you know, funding pages that, that are out there. I mean, do try to verify them so you know you're not being scammed. But, you know, there there's usually legal defense funds because people are going to be facing, you know, some uh, some charges. But there's also I mean, look, that that those camps that they put up there, I mean, they've got. I mean, these are full service kitchens with with sleeping quarters and they've got children that are there. These things are not just, you know, they're not you know digging bunkers here. They're, they're building homes where people live and and where where children and community members are a part of this stuff. So, and, and, and they need to be funded. So if there's any number of ways that people can people can help. Yeah. And one thing is that they're there teaching the medicines they're teaching our language right you know back to our people how to be sustainable off the live off the land and that kind of stuff which is right. really uh, look in in the wake of uh, or in not just the wake but in in facing even more climate change more and more people are going to have to figure out how they're how they're going to uh, you know maintain or improve their quality of life without you know trying to screw the planet more but uh, yeah and the, and the main thing too also is that they're they're there for a fight to save mother earth Mm -hmm. you know to save save our people again you know that's what they're going for they're not going for the money like the corporations and uh the politicians are right so people need to support every bit everybody who's doing this sure sure well i want to thank you for joining me um again the hour goes fast and uh um when especially when you've got a you know passionate topic to talk about so i want to i want to thank you for uh, you know, for for joining me on the program, and look forward to having you back. And uh, you take care of yourself as uh, uh, as as you navigate what's going on. Okay, All right, no, do you too? All right. So again, I want to thank uh, thanks folks folks for listening. You do stay um, uh, knowledgeable about what's going on. It's it's really important that people understand you know uh, understand what these situations are and. And not to be fooled, not to be fooled by, you know, government statements, by police statements. Uh, understand that there are native people and we're, you know, that are that are fighting for their survival and for their existence. It's 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 what we do. So I, I, I think it's really important that people people, you know, know that I want to do. I want to say again, you can find this film invasion. It's a 20 minute film. I'm going to be screening the film in New York at the end of, uh, end of this month. I do a screening of, uh, usually of a film, uh, at the end of every, uh, every month. Uh, I just did uh, iron horse, uh, in, in January and, uh, and had a really good crowd. This one, because it's a shorter film, it'll allow us not only to, to show the film, but then to have um, updates and maybe even show some of these other videos that are coming out. So um, if you if you do make it to New York uh, or if you're if you know people in New York, encourage them to come out to these uh, to these screenings that I do at the Brooklyn Commons, and uh, and uh, we'll we'll take it from there. So again, I want to thank you for um, uh, you know for 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 being a part of the show and, and for for listening to the show. And it's always. Uh, it's always something. All right, this is John Kane. This is Let's Talk Native. You know what?